Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. This is Snapshot 20W19A. As 1.16 gets closer we are seeing less big features and content and more polish and refinement of the game. So in this one there's some new features, some changes and a technical change and a whole bunch of bug fixes and in and amongst here there are some really interesting changes looking into mob mechanics, mob spawning etc. So this could turn out to be a really interesting snapshot. So the first change on the changelog states that patches of blackstone and gravel now generate in all nether biomes and patches of soul sand will generate in soul sand valleys. So I've been flying around and this is the best spot I've found where there is a fair amount of gravel and it always seems to be low down close to the lava lake level that you find this. There's a couple of blocks of blackstone as well and where else I've seen it in this world it's only been in very small quantities. It also feels kind of rare and when you go higher up into the terrain, it's actually really hard to find this stuff anywhere. So it feels like a, a very minor change and something that you only find lower down in the world. I mean, if you've spotted something as I fly around here, with exception to the uh, Basalt Deltas biome, you know, going through these other biomes, I I've hardly seen this change at all. But it's definitely noticeable when you're down near the lava lakes. And so here in the Soul Sand Valley, we now have patches of Soul Sand generating. I could have swore this was already a thing, right? Or am I going crazy? Anyway, it's definitely here. You'll find soul soil and soul sand. Added distance by strider statistic. This one should be self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, let's put a saddle on and hop on this fella. And now, of course, we are traveling. And this is going to be measured as a statistic. And what I've discovered that's rather interesting is this only works in survival at the moment. I just did this in creative and I got nothing. When I switched to survival, I got a statistic. So villagers can now spawn iron golems regardless of their profession or status or latest working time. Now there's actually a whole bunch of bugs related to villagers and iron golems. So we're going to cover some of that. But essentially a villager without a profession or one that has a profession and is yet to do any work can now contribute to the spawning of iron golems. One of those bugs was related to having too many iron golems spawning over and over again. We've seen this on the Hermitcraft server, and so something with iron golems spawning is changing. Of course, you know, I can't read the code and give you the exact details, but expect to see some differences. So villagers are known to try and sleep in beds that are already occupied, and it kind of looks like they're still doing that. Apparently this is something that they shouldn't do. And this also causes some other bugs and issues with villagers never taking up a bed again. Supposedly these things are fixed. And villagers that have spawned into the world through world generation as opposed to being spawned in by an egg or breeding had a lower follow range than other villagers. So this could prevent them from finding their workstations and behaving like normal. So they may sound like minor changes but keep in mind trading halls, villager breeders... Iron Golem Farms, these things can be affected by minor little changes, so let's hope that uh, all is in order here. Sebastian or Bastion Remnants are now a little less common, and so I've done some teleporting around, seeing the frequency of where these things appear, and it does feel like it's been reduced a little bit, but maybe not too much. You know, we don't have the exact numbers, but you'll see them less frequently in your world now. So Mojang have lowered the amount that weeping and twisting vines grow when bone milled, I remember this was quite extravagant, now it seems to be about two to four pieces, maybe even one that time. So yes, you won't get as much as this from Bone Mill. Of course I've got some of these up here. That one grew quite a few more that time. Yeah, maybe about one to five seems to be the range at which they grow. You now need to use Shears to get an item when breaking Nether Sprouts. So Shears is the way to obtain this. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Break it with your fish, you get nothing, use the shears and you'll get the nether sprouts. So the next two we might as well roll into one. Tweaked spawning of mobs to more closely adhere to mob caps. And fish now have their own mob category and mob cap. Now this brings me to the mob cap counter that was added in the last snapshot. So let's run through this again quickly. I now know what each of these stand for. SC is spawn count, M is monsters, things like creepers and zombies. C is for creatures, which is basically passive animals, cows and pigs. Then you have A for ambient, W for water, and M for misc. However, there is two W's in this one. 
Now one of those W's is the traditional water mob cap for things like squid, dolphins and I believe turtles are a part of that as well. And the other W one is probably for fish, maybe they should rename it to F which would include salmon, cod and puffer fish. And so with this split into two mob caps, it could mean that you'll see more mobs overall or maybe they've been carefully split so that there is still an equal balance of these mobs. But if you've got something like a squid farm in your world, you're not going to be sharing that spawning area with other types of fish anymore. So it should be good for squid farms. And going back to the mob cap screen here, you can see the two W categories have got some mobs in them. I'm pretty sure those are the squid and the mobs we spawned behind us. Which reminds me of two other things. First of all, the targeted block has been moved over to the right hand side of the screen. And also this mob cap does not include persistent mobs. So if you rename a mob or you give it an item, it won't be included in the numbers on the F3 screen. So we've gone through the main points of the blog post and now we're on to the bug fixes. And this one is related to mob spawning. Quite a big change actually. Mobs will no longer spawn on Wither Roses and we are in the Chunk of Death from Season 6 of Hermitcraft, the farm that I made. This is a quad slime chunk, mobs should be able to spawn down here, but they will no longer do that because of these Wither Roses. And just in case you're thinking that me being in spectator mode might be affecting this, here I am in creative, nothing is spawning down there. If we activate these spawners those will of course still work. But yeah, really big change because you can make some really overpowered mob farms with this. And personally, I actually think this is probably a change for the better. Another change related to mob spawning and behavior. Endermen are able to teleport off of magma blocks. This was just something that got introduced a few snapshots back. I also noticed that they can actually teleport to the Wither Roses, which is not the best of ideas. Another change to mobs, the Hoglin and the Piglin will be zombified when they're in the end dimension. Just something they didn't do before. And uh, they're going to attack those endermen. <laughs> and piglins would also prefer a regular crossbow over an enchanted one, which has been considered a bug, so they'll pick up those enchanted crossbows now. Entities with colored name tags weren't displaying the color, so this would have just been white previously, but that bug's been taken care of, so... If you're doing custom stuff with mobs, you can now use colors for their names. Okay, changes to redstone, just like last time. However, this first one is very aesthetic. Okay, so look at the particle effects. They no longer just appear from the very center of the redstone. They can actually appear at the edges and it's sort of randomized where on the redstone these particle effects appear. So that's just a very minor and nice little change. We are now in last week's snapshot and that's just to show you a bug with the soul sand here. Probably because it's not technically a full block, you can see that redstone doesn't run up the side of it and that has been corrected in this snapshot. And so here it is, you can see it running up the side of the soul sand block. And while we're in last week's snapshot, you can see here the compass and the clock are doing their thing. It's displaying the time of day, the compass is pointing to spawn however we don't actually well we do have a compass to make the clock but the point is you could use this right here just the mere knowledge of the recipe to then find out what the time of day is and find out which way the compass is pointing now however you can see that these things are stationary regardless of what way we're facing or what the time of day is they're just going to remain static and so currently I'm being affected by levitation and if we just go into glide mode, this actually gets cancelled out by the gliding of the elytra. So now in 20W19A, when I tap spacebar, nothing happens. Let's also do that in survival mode, yep. So it disables your elytra wings, which is kind of a big deal for when you're going to the end dimension. Also, achievement get. <laughs> oh... One thing you might have not noticed about the roots and the sprouts is that they don't have a random offset on the block. They appear in the same spot every single time. So here in the new snapshot, I don't even have to place them down again. They are just now naturally offset to give some variation and randomness, which is a nice little detail. The crimson door and the warped door don't have hinges. This is something that every other type of door actually has on its texture but these two do not. And so big and small, both the textures here have been modified. Hinges are on the door and on the little textures down here. 
And that, my friends, brings us to the end of this snapshot video. If you've enjoyed it, then leave a like. If you want to stay informed, make sure you subscribe and check out the videos on your screen if you're looking for some more entertainment. But that is it from me, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.